So unfortunately, now what we're left with is this um, yeah, Sierra and it's refusing to start or do anything. Welcome back. If you're new here, hello. Today we're heading off to Penruth, Petruth. I can't even remember what it's called now. Um, we're going to this campsite. I will tell you what it's called properly later on. We're going to this campsite that is near to Cheddar Gorge. Uh, I've got an event that I'm looking to put on. It's one I've run previously and I'm looking to do it again. And, but this is a new venue. So I'm going to go take a look at that today. And we're going to stay over tonight and sort of have an explore around and just get a feel for the place. And hopefully it'll all work out. So I thought you guys would like to come with us. When I click on it, it's coming up with an error code. And it's telling me that, uh, that yeah, that needs to be resolved. So the error code's coming up as 161-00069. point updated. Oh, thank you very much. So, <laughs> so I've been to the uh, Drones UK site over on Facebook, the group there, and I've asked the question in there to see if there's something I'm missing because the YouTube videos I've looked at, they've said, oh, there's something stuck, blow it out. Add some WD-40, give it a tap, turn it, all sorts of things. So I've tried uh, several little things on that, and this is where I've got to. So now, basically, uh, it seems that the only thing I've got left to do, the only recourse, is to send it back to DJI itself. Now, I've been told that is mind-numbingly long and can take for quite a while, although some people have said they've got it quite fast. So, um, so I guess, yeah, I've got to start the process. So here we are. And now I'm filling in the repair application and hoping that uh, it can be resolved quite quickly. So that's it. The application has been successful. I've got a case number. And now I think I'm just waiting for the postage. Um, what does it say there? So uh, we'll be sent a shipping label if it's within uh, the area. So I've just got to wait and see what happens with that. So, yeah, let's... Let the waiting begin. So it turns out, so far, the process has been really painless. They sent the shipping thing through in about an hour. And also, when I put it onto the Facebook group, an actual uh, person that works for DJI got in contact and said, you know, do this, that and the other. Right. So, so far, they've been impeccable. Obviously, you don't expect something really, really expensive as these things are um, to you know, to, to break very quickly after just a, a few short hours of flight. However, I also understand that things happen. These are very delicate, sensitive things. And um, and yeah, so I'm not blaming DJI themselves. So yeah, actually so far it's been quite positive. We'll see what happens. Right, let's get this packed away and ready to send. Here we go, all wrapped up, ready to go. I wanted to get a bike rack for the back of the van. Now I've got the ladders on there, as you know, I've got the spare wheel on there, as you know, so I thought, okay, what can I do for that? So I did a little bit of research and I found these ladder racks that they actually attach to ladders. They're meant for RVs in the US. Now, the, the upside of that is that they fit perfectly. The downside of that is that when I looked on Amazon, I got this result. Turns out, that there's nothing available in the UK um, without four or five months shipping, right? So I'm like, well, that's no good to me because I kind of want things now. That's just the way I am. So I had a look on Facebook Marketplace and lo and behold, I managed to find exactly that. So this is what I'm talking about here. They go for about 70, 80 quid on Amazon and the guy wanted 70 quid for it. Don't let the box fool you because actually, it's brand new. Uh, it was all in its exact packaging and everything. I've just put this together now. And so what I've actually got is a brand new thing at, at the same cost. I had to drive a little bit to get it mine. But basically the way this works is really straightforward. It's so simple. Um, I put little attachment pins in it, but this hooks on, this flops out, you stick your bikes on it. I mean, it really is sort of very basic design. However, it works perfectly. So I'll show you more of that when it's on and when I'm sort of fitting. Good news. Drones just come back. So this is the box that it's come in. It's uh, very well packed. 
I haven't got my stand with me at the minute, so I'm afraid you're just gonna have to do with this weird angle, right? Um, yeah, so it's coming, it's all very well packaged here. Um, and I'm really pleased with the, with the, with the speed that they did this and how they did this. So let me just take it apart and see what we've got. Okay, so it's wrapped up in bubble wrap there. For a minute, I sort of panicked because I sent I sent it back in the original box, and then when I opened the box, there's nothing in it. But uh, it looks like what we've got is a new. Oh, well, look, a new what? I'm not sure. So <laughs> I'm actually saying that it looks very much like they've just sent me a completely new drone itself, right? Um, they said they was going to repair it. And that's what the uh, that's what the all well, the messaging has been about. But this looks like a brand new drone. Brilliant. OK, uh, so I'm going to get this open and I'm going to try and get it out for a little test flight now this afternoon. Just try and reconnect everything up. Um, if it's a new drone, as it certainly looks like here, then I, I don't really have to test it to see if it works because it'll be brand new. So I've just got to connect it up, which is great. What I'll also do, guys, is I'll talk you through step by step because I'm genuinely impressed with the service that I've got from them. So not the best view of me, I'll grant you. However, uh, we're, we've just stopped off to get a McDonald's on the way and there's nowhere to park inside. So it's very, very busy in the car park. So here I am wedged up on the side here. They've done that sneaky thing where the car park for McDonald's direct, you can have uh, free parking at for 90 minutes, whatever it is. The adjacent car parks, the ones that look like they still sort of okay to park in, they will charge. So you, you can get yourself caught out like that if you're not careful. It's all a bit sneaky, but anyway, that's what it is. So here we are parked up on the side of the road. Hopefully Louise won't be too long and, uh, and we'll be all right. Anyway, what I wanted to uh, talk about was I said earlier on with regards to the time frames with dealing with the drone, right? So it was really, really interesting and I'm, I'm very impressed with them, I gotta be honest, because uh, I went to an event on Saturday and I was going to use the drone and one of the motors had gone. I thought, OK, perhaps it's an easy fix. Perhaps I can fix it. Right. Sunday, I had a little look at it. No joy. I thought, right. OK. Um, asked on one of the Facebook groups and they basically, as a consensus, said, well, you need to send it back to DJI. I've heard some stories about how it takes forever and all the rest of it. So I was I was a little bit concerned about that. Uh, a person from DGI actually answered the Facebook comments and said, oh, send it back to us. So they were very good there. So I thought, right, OK, that's what I need to do. So Monday morning, I started a support ticket. And this is the timeline. And this is why I'm so impressed. Monday morning, I started the support ticket and they sent through uh, the shipping details that I needed, all that sort of thing. So first thing, Tuesday morning, I sent it off and... Wednesday, Thursday, they kept me in the loop. They acknowledged that they had it. They said, oh, this is what it's going to cost to repair. This is what's the matter with it. What, you know, so pay for that. So I did all of that and it cost, um, it was a cost to the repair. It wasn't extravagant, I don't think. And I was pretty okay with that. But then to top it all now, we've got to Friday. So that's, you know, so I started this process on Monday morning and we're now Friday afternoon. And they've delivered the drone back to me and they've actually sent me a brand new drone, right? So I can't fault DJI at all at this point. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm sort of, I've remarked on, on how good their service has been and how painless it's been. They've they've kept me updated throughout. Um, I've had lots of emails and it's been, it, it's been a, a genuinely as, as, as much as you can say it's been a pleasure because obviously you've had to pay money and your drone has broken. Um, it, it has been, you know, it's the, They've dealt with a bad situation in a way that's actually made me feel good about the company. And the reason I'm remarking on that is because that is such a rarity these days. You really just don't get that. So um, what I'm going to try and do now, hopefully, have a quick bite to eat, find somewhere nice and then get the drone set up again, because obviously I'm going to have to redo all that. But that's a small price to pay, I think. So we're down in Somerset. We're just a few miles, literally about a mile away from Cheddar Gorge. And what you can see behind me is the coffee shack. Next to me here is one of the food trucks. They have a few. Now, this place is enormous. So I'm going to do a quick walk around. I want to show you where things are and what it's got so you can see for yourself. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to do a little walk around for you. This is one of the fields. There are, there are a number of fields here. So this is a couple of the fields here. 
we've got the reception area down there so that's where you come in so this is one of the camping fields so it's a big old place this it's got lots and lots of space so there's the main reception area down here so there's lots of hard standing here for those of you who have a camper van and want one of those now this is what i wanted to show you they have absolutely pristine toilets and lots and lots of them so there is rows and rows of blocks of these look at this now you can see as we go around the corner that this is all these are all toilets and showers right so there's a lot of them so as we go up at the moment you're seeing these little closed signs at the sign that's because we're at season but as the time goes on they get more and more so if we have a quick look here so this is one of the showers, as you can see, there are these big cubicles here and they're actually, apart from a few dirty footprints, which is understandable, they're very well looked after, very, very clean. As we come around here, we can start to see the fields opening up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the event field in a moment. So this is another camping field that they have. Up here there are shepherd's huts and things. There's a big marquee and what have you. So I'll show you those as we go. We're not going to get too close, guys, because there are people in these at the moment, I believe. So we're just going to have a look around at the outside. I'm just going to show you, right? So this, you can hire this for the weekend of the festival, right? All the things I'm going to show you, they are for hire from the site. You can have them. You can stay in them. You can really make a weekend of it. So the first is this, the American school. But this is what they call a schoolie, right? Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. So this, um, I'll have a look at the website and stuff, but I believe it holds sort of eight people, what have you. And it's blooming lovely inside from the pictures. So that's the, the schoolie over there. Now, if we go over this way, we've got these shepherd's huts here, which we'll get a little closer to. So this is one of the... Um, I'm not sure what they call these roll top things like gypsy caravans. Roll tops, yeah. Like... Bow tops. Bow tops, okay, bow tops, sorry. There we now, go. this behind me is a bit special. It's a genuine, it's a yellow submarine. You can stay in a yellow submarine, look at that. So, for fans of the Beatles, if you're of an age, you come and stay here for the weekend. And then, as we pan around here, this in front of us, this big space here, that is the event site itself. I'm gonna throw the drone up now so you can have a look at it from that point of view. The drone's been up, great news. It now is working absolutely fine. As I said, they've given me a brand new unit, a brand new drone, brand new um, handset by the looks of it. And <coughs> I've re really sort of configured it the way that I wanted it to work. Been out for its maiden voyage today. All worked really, really well. It's a lovely day for it. So uh, yeah, really pleased with that. So overall, uh, I think I said earlier on, overall with that, I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed with the service. Just about to take the bike site. It's Louise's inaugural, is, the, is that the right word, inaugural? No, I've ridden a bike, but just okay. not for about 20 it's years. It's Louise's inaugural <laughs> time on this bike, all right? but it's been a long time on any bike. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've, um, we've gone out, we've got a little bike for Louise and one for me, and now we're gonna go and uh, try them out, yeah? The last time we tried a bike, by the way, I didn't catch it on video, but it was when we were in the forest and uh, um, and Louise didn't quite land it properly. <laughs> Feels like we're on a little bit of a treasure hunt. Just found this little homemade map saying, go that way. But this is where we've just walked up. So up the side of this industrial estate. So uh, it's all very exciting. Bad news, I'm afraid. We just found the place 
and they were having this Oktoberfest thing. So the place was absolutely rammed to the rafters. It was ticket only and um, yeah, and it was a little bit too much for us in the sense that we wanted something a bit more laid back. So, uh, so instead of that here, we uh, sat in the last of the evening sun. That's what's supposed to light it. That's really clever. While the charcoal burns down, ready to cook on, let me show you what we're doing today. So I think the last time we went sort of Italian. This time we're going to go Chinese. So I've got some shoulder steaks here. I've got a mixed pepper stir fry. It's got bean sprouts and things in it. And I've got this sweet and sour sauce. Now, as per usual, we're going to throw that in the Ridge Monkey, going to use the big one, going to use it like a wok. Uh, and that, I hope, is going to give us a nice tea. Right. Time to throw in the stir fry. So again, it's one of those camp, camping cheap trick things. You know, a little five minute hack. So essentially this whole thing, once the charcoal is done, is 10 minutes to do, really not that much. And so overall, you got yourself a nice meal for a couple of quid and 10 minutes time. So now we've just got a packet of sweet and sour going in and that will finish it off. The finished article, so 10 minutes, Chinese meal in the camper van. There's a map here with a couple of the local things on it, such as uh, Cheddar Gorge and things like that. So basically there's lots of things local, um, all within good walking distance. Morning, after a lovely night on the campsite, we're now in Cheddar. And this is uh, real cheese, real cheddar cheese making a rural village, right? So this is Cheddar Village itself at the bottom of the gorge. We've had a little drive up the gorge and now we're just gonna have a little quick wander around the village. It all looks very nice. Does anyone know where these steps go in Cheddar? Look, I've only really, first time I've noticed them, they go all the way up the side here. They look really steep, but I wonder where they go. Well, I have the answer now. That's uh, Jacob's Ladder, it goes up to the tower, whatever that might be. Looks like you may have to pay, I'm not sure. 